I mentioned that there were also developments today in the Justice Department's January 6th probe, particularly as it relates to Mike Pence. This was Vice President Pence back in November when he was asked if he would speak before the January 6th investigation in Congress. Will you answer questions about that day before Congress? Congress has no right to my testimony. Uh, we have a separation of powers under the Constitution of the United States, um, and I believe it would establish a terrible precedent uh, for the Congress to summon a vice president of the United States to speak about deliberations that took place uh, at the White House. So and, you're, uh, you're closing the door on that entirely? Um, I'm closing the door on that. and. Uh, but I must say again that the partisan nature of the January 6th committee uh, has been a disappointment to me. Former Vice President Pence saying he would not testify before the January 6th committee because as vice president and a member of the executive branch, it would establish a terrible precedent when it comes to the separation of powers. The January 6th committee, of course, was an investigation in the legislative branch. In the days after that interview aired, the New York Times reported that when it came to speaking to the Department of Justice, and its probe, well, Vice President Pence was, quote, open to considering the request, recognizing that the DOJ's criminal investigation is different from the inquiry by the House January 6th committee. But now, barely three months later, a grand jury subpoena has been issued by the DOJ, and according to new reporting today, the former vice president is unlikely to comply with that subpoena. Now, this time, his argument is that his role on January 6th as president of the Senate made him a member of the legislative branch, so he doesn't have to comply with the DOJ's demands. Just to break this down, three months ago, he was part of the executive branch, and he didn't want to involve himself in an inquiry from the legislative branch. Now, he's a member of the legislative branch, who doesn't want to comply with an inquiry from the executive branch. According to reporting from Politico, Pence is preparing to cite the speech or debate clause, which protects congressional officials from legal proceedings related to their work. How did all this happen? Joining us now is Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren of California. She was, of course, a member of the January 6th committee. Congresswoman, thanks for joining us. I feel like what Mike Pence is doing right now is the dictionary definition of having your cake and eating it, too. When it is convenient, he creates, he's either part of the legislative branch or the executive branch. Are you reading it in the same way that I am? I know that you are trained in the law. Well, this is um, wrongheaded in many levels. First, he ought to just stand up and tell the truth and not try and evade that. It looks very bad. Uh, number uh, two, uh, you can, this is, you know, unprecedented. I don't think there's any case on this, but it's not that hard to decide that speech or debate does not apply in this case. All you need to do is look at Article 1, Section 3, Article 1, Section 6, and the 12th Amendment. Uh, basically, those sections say uh, the vice uh, president is president of the Senate, uh, that the 12th Amendment says the vice president shall open the envelopes and the, um, and the votes shall then be counted. And speech or debate in Articles uh, 1, Section 6 says that members of the legislative body may not be uh, held to, um, shall not be questioned for speech or debate in any other place. Well, the vice president's whole premise was that his role on the 6th opening the envelopes was purely ministerial. Uh, it had nothing to do, I mean, he had no discretion. That's what he told the president. That's what he said public. Obviously, that's not uh, a legislative act. In, Things other than legislation or, or uh, activities leading up to legislation do not uh, benefit from the speech or debate clause, as Lindsey Graham found much to his dismay in the Georgia grand jury. Clearly, the vice president's not going to go anywhere with a claim of executive privilege before a grand jury that's been convened for a criminal purpose. I mean, the Nixon case made that clear. And I don't think this claim of uh, speech or debate is really worth much. It's embarrassing that he would make that claim after stating so many times that this was purely a ministerial act. So he may just tr be trying to get delay, uh, but I think he may also find out that uh, grand juries 
get decisions a lot quicker than uh, the Congress does in the civil courts. Yeah, you raised such a good point that Mike, pa Mike Pence's singular act as vice president was to say he could not play a part in overturning democracy. He had purely a ministerial role to perform on January 6th, no matter what the president of the United States might have wanted him to do.